What's going on everyone? Phil with Voxel Dental here with a nice little digital workflow video. So this video is going to show the replacement of old amalgams to a 3D printed onlay. Everything's going to be scanned with the Atero Lumina designed in ExoCAD and printed on the Sprint Ray Midas. And the kicker is, I'm the patient. Dr. Dave Christensen is the one doing the work. Dr. Christensen practices in Walwick, New Jersey and is an expert in all things digital. He uses CBCT, photogrammetry, a mill, ExoCAD, and multiple printers and scanners for different applications. He also helps teach with Dr. Anthony Vocaturo at the Institute of Advanced Dental Education in Colts Neck, New Jersey. Okay, let's get to it. Okay, so we first have a few clinical photos just showing you what everything looks ahead of time. And you can see on this picture, we've got uh, a fracture on the distal marginal ridge and also on the buccal aspect. So there were some concerns about this fracturing. Uh, so it went from an inlay to an onlay to help, uh, to help protect that. And then you can also see a photo from the occlusal view. Here I am getting numb with an awesome piece of spit you can see there. And then while I was getting numb, we took some pre-prep scans, upper, low, and bite records using the Itero Lumina. Now a little bit of the prep. And continuing to contour everything nicely, and then with some finishing touches. After that, we're gonna take a post prep scan using the Itero Lumina as well, of course. And we could have cut the pre-prep tooth out in the software and then simply scan the post prep tooth. We just didn't do that in this video, but you can definitely do that here. But a real nice feature is showing the ability to capture clinical photos right from the Lumina scan. I'm gonna stop this for a second. You can see in the upper right, that's actually uh, NERI, a software feature for interproximal caries. And then in the lower right is actual clinical photos. So you can actually take a scan of the entire mouth and then walk the patient around all of their clinical photos. Also, you can use those intro photos for insurance purposes. Uh, no need to grab a camera or anything like that. You can just grab the photos right from the actual scan, like you can see here. You can also grab screenshots and draw on them with arrows, circles, writing, whatever you want. Everything's stored in the patient record. So we've exported our STL file from iTero, and now we are finishing the design in ExoCAD. And this is a full version of ExoCAD, and you can see we're going to finish the design and then export this file out to send to the sprint rate. If you didn't have a full version of ExoCAD, you can actually use iTero's design suite and that software is going to allow you to do a design, a crown design, inlay, onlay, directly in the iTero software. And from there, you can send it directly to the Sprint Ray software to begin your print. Okay, so back to our case. We are now uploading the STL file that we exported from ExoCAD and uploading it into the Sprint Ray software. Here, we're going to select uh, onlay. And then also select the type of resin that we're, uh, that we're using, which is going to be Crown HT, which is a high translucency resin, which has around 63% ceramic filler. The software automatically generates your supports, but if you wanted to customize it and change the angle, you can certainly do that as you can see here. And we're sending it to the printer now and we select our Midas. So with each cartridge, you can print one crown, two, maybe three inlays, onlays, or veneers, depending on their size. And there's three slots on the printer, so you can actually print three cartridges simultaneously. We first need to prime the cartridge, and we're just mixing up the resin, getting it nice and fluid and ready to print. Next, we scan the cartridge, making sure that the, uh, the resin that we chose in the software matches the resin that we're actually putting on the printer itself. And you can see here, We've got approximately a seven and a half minute print, all right? So once it's finished printing, we're taking it off the printer and removing the print from the cartridge. All right, so there's our print. 
and it still has a bunch of uncured resin on there, so we're gonna clean it off with a paper towel as much as possible. And then we're going to use some air to remove as much of that uncured resin as possible. Right? We don't want to put this in a typical uh, alcohol wash. Um, this type of resin is very sensitive to alcohol, so we really want to just uh, blow off as much resin as possible. And then you'll see we're going to use a little micro brush dipped in alcohol to remove the rest of that resin from the intaglio surface and any other area. So here we are cutting off all of the supports. And now this is where we're using that micro brush that's dipped in alcohol. And we're going to get off as much of that uncured resin as possible. Then we're going to use some more air and repeat that process just to make sure it's nice and clean. Next step, we're going to pop it into the Nano Cure and it's going to be a 10 minute cure. And then take it out and then polish off the, any remaining supports from the actual print. So that's what we're doing here. So this next step is colloquially called candy coating. It's not a standard protocol, but you will see it a lot and it acts as a glaze. You're going to take a little bit of the native resin from the cartridge and you're just going to uh, paint on a very, very thin layer. We're going to do a quick light cure just to kind of make sure that's set. And then we're also going to drop it into some glycerin. So the reason we're using glycerin is because with printing, there's an oxygen inhibition layer. Oxygen doesn't allow that top layer to cure effectively. So dropping it in glycerin and doing a second cure for about half the time will remove that oxygen inhibition layer. And your prints will be more resistant, more biocompatible, and a little stronger. A little sandblasting freshens up the surface to allow the bonding material to penetrate properly. And then next step is we're gonna use some monobond, which is a type of silane. And then next step after this, we're actually going to use uh, adhes. So you can see the, the variolink, link, that's the actual uh, the cement. But what we're actually doing right now is using the adhes, which is a universal bonding agent. And then in the mouth, we're gonna first add etch with an awesome view of my nose hair. And then next step, which some do, this is a gluma, so that's gonna help decrease sensitivity. And then also the, uh, the adhes bonding agent which you're going to do a little light cure, and you can also do it a second time if you wanted to. And the last step is we're gonna add the Vario Link, the resin cement. And then seat the onlay. So now he's just poking around and getting rid of all that extra cement. Checking the contacts with floss and no, that's not more of my spit, that's actually a piece of floss. And some final polishing to make it look nice and pretty. And the big before and after reveal. Everything looks good, looks nice and pretty. Feels good in the mouth, margins look great, we're a happy guy.